Hello everyone, hello chickies, it is Baron. Today we're going to be talking about like some underrated ships in Star Citizen. I know it's not something that I really touch on. There's a lot of videos that I really want to start recording for, but I haven't been playing Star Citizen. Um, I've got something going on at the moment, uh, like a tip link to help me get a... Um, like a curved monitor, try and get rid of my triple monitor setup. It's actually kind of horrible now, like with Star Citizen and content creation and all that. It's at the top of the a comment, the pinned comment, and it's at the top of the description if you want to help. If you don't, that's fine. Just enjoy the content and watch the videos all the way to the end. Um, all the links in the description, join our Discord. So the reason I bring these ships to attention and I know they're not everyone's first choice. And let me know down in the comments what your first choice of, of ship is and, you know, what an underrated ship might be to you. But to me, I don't, like, fly a lot of ships. And that, I guess, is the way I sort of work because I have, like, ships that I like flying. And I do go to some other ships sometimes when I'm not, like, really feeling the other ships that I'm flying. And I started to think, you know, like, what are some underrated ships? Because everyone will go to the top tier ship and they'll just go do what they want to do, but they won't go and experience a ship or they won't go and experience the game with a ship and they won't experience that ship like in different atmospheres and go and test it. But anyway, I don't really use the Reliant all that much, like the Reliant Mako. These ships are fantastic. I think they're great. Like you've got a science one there. You've literally got one that is a, um, it's like a journalist. Like for journalists, it's got a camera on it. And I think that's fantastic. Like if you were to do like the Daymar rally, that would be fantastic. If you were to, I don't know, um, go and report on an org battle, that would also be great. But at the same time, um, they're just great ships. Like for low flying and Atmo, I've seen people use these. I've used them myself and they're fantastic. They are great fun for a ship. And if you haven't used them, the concept of them is really great. Just remember that you know the, the cockpit does spin away like does spin with like i don't know you you know it's like a spin top one end spins and one sits still but yeah it's it's kind of a confusing ship but it's kind of cool at the same time now the gladiator i don't use the gladiator a whole lot myself it's not really a ship that i typically would i know I don't know go and use I have seen people use this and people do say oh you know I use that disgusting ship known as the gladiator but the gladiators yeah I don't know it's kind of a cool ship I think it's really it's a really nice concept like it's a nice little bomber um, I know a lot of people do really well with them as well it's just one of those ships that everyone enjoys so going into the gladiator I did do a little bit of research just a minute ago and it's actually apparently really good for blockade running and doing stealth ops and there's a t8a version i didn't even know that that there was a t8a gladiator so that's pretty much the ue navy's premier carrier based torpedo plane and it's uh used for strategic space to ground bomb runs let me know what you think about the gladiator whether or not you use it and how you use it because i'm genuinely interested to see how people use this thing and then going from there, we're moving on to the Cutter, the Drake Cutter, the new um, starter ship, I guess. And, you know, I think this is really underrated because no one really uses it all that often, being, you know, the small ship that it is. And being that, you know, it has a great potential, but no one really uses it because it's so small and they're so used to having big ships. And... It's one thing that kind of bothers me because it is a fantastic little ship and people don't use it enough, which, you know, I get, but go use the cutter. Do a couple of small missions on the ground based and see what you think of it. And it does have those shutters on the side of it. So it's moving the way for something like the Carrick that has the, um, like the shutters over the windows to protect it from any sort of real, um, heated scenario and I guess solar flares as well for when you're doing exploration and then moving on from there you got the terrapin the terrapin I like people say it's like a little box a little shoe box and it's 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 nothing it might be overpriced for what it is and I'm not going to disagree but when you get the chance to fly one fly one and when you do have that opportunity go and get someone to shoot at you with a 600 eye or something really big and see how it soaks it soaks those rounds and that's not even with full capacity of armor in the game like that's just that's just the shields and when i used it i couldn't believe it and if you haven't heard of the terrapin it's basically used 
for scouting whatnot. So it's a scouter and if you get caught, you should be able to get away pretty quick and be able to soak the rounds up and get out of there quick smart because it's got really great armor and shielding. Moving on from there, the Hawk. Now this is another good low flyer and I understand everyone else doesn't like this. A lot of people don't like it and that's completely understandable but I do enjoy this for low flying and just looking at the aesthetics of it and how the wings move when you're taking the landing gear out. I mean, just fun to watch. And that sort of moves on to our next one is the Ballista. This isn't a ship, it's a ground vehicle. I could have put a lot more ground vehicles in there but I never realized how underrated this Ballista is. I was in a bit of a, a bit of a heated scenario once, had a had a crime stat, and had the guys from Red P, OP in specific, who was in the ballista. He took out three or four guys in the matter of like minutes, not even minutes, maybe seconds. They're like, yep, boom, one's down, next one's down, and the next one's down. I was like, what? How did you do that? And they're like, man, the ballista is so underrated it's great so i actually got one because of that scenario and i've been using it and it is fantastic so if you haven't got one and you think it's useless get one use it it's fantastic love it uh but yeah it's for a ground vehicle it's I, like the centurion doesn't even come close to this thing this thing is like on an on the next level this thing is just amazing i love the ballista i mean i don't agree with all the other ships that they're making off of the atlas chassis but ballista is fantastic going on the car too well alien ship obviously the way it transforms and the way it sounds like the sound is absolutely amazing it sounds like an angry tiger or an angry lion some form of a beast that is not happy and it is awesome to listen to so if you haven't fly it if you know someone who's got it try it out check it out and it's awesome watch the thrusters like the thrusters are awesome the way they move around the, like just that general that ship in general is fun to fly and it's fun to look at um going on from there we'll skip the run out because we've gone over those the freelancer max now this is the sort of the i guess the cargo hauling version of the ship and it only has 120 SU, SCU, but it is nice and easy to access the cargo hold on it. If you're not taking too much cargo, this thing is where it's at. So if you haven't used it, I would definitely look into going and using it because it's just like a fun ship. It's fun to go and do some drug calling in. I have done that as well. Um, it's just generally fun. Now, in terms of you know people don't use these because you know they just look like a generic ship and you know they're not really great but a lot of people do use them and they're fantastic if you haven't used one again go and use it let me know down in the comments what you think of it going on from there you got the freelancer Dur. that's the expedition version of it again another fantastic ship doesn't have as much cargo as the max obviously because it's the expedition version and it's not the cargo hauling version the normal freelancer now i wouldn't go too crazy about this thing but it is fun to fly and again it's just a, new, a different ship to look at you have to get used to these ships it's not something that you just instantly going to have like some sort of relationship with overnight you have to get used to these ships use them and see how they perform for you now cutlass black that's an obvious one a lot of us started out of cutlass black and then moved our way up and this sort of cemented our way through the game um to start rock mining, putting in a ground vehicle, doing a little bit of cargo hauling, doing missions, getting in and out of scenarios, easy. Let me know what your thoughts on the Cutlass Black are. I think it's a fantastic ship. Love it. I had one. I had a Freelancer actually originally, and then I went and got a Cutlass Black because I heard, you know, and it looked great. Like it was just a fun, cool looking ship and it really did perform. It performed for what it did and it was great. Um, moving on, you've got the Mantis. Now, a lot of people aren't going to use this because it's a weak ship. It's not something that uh, you would probably use too often. I use it because, um, you know, you're stopping people from quantum jumping and then you can sort of surround them and then pirate them, kill them, do whatever you want with them. But again, I like this for low flying. When you're standing on the ground and you're listening to this thing fly over, it sounds phenomenal. It is so cool. I love listening to this thing when it flies over. 
Moving on, you got the Nomad. Now, I've got a video that I'm doing on the Nomad. I've just got to get in game and I wanted a specific paint, like the auspicious paint, and sort of make it themed and just enjoy this ship. But again, this is another underrated ship. A great little cargo holder for holding a rock as well and doing multiple little th like jobs and missions. And it's easy to fly around. You don't have to think about much. That's the that's the point of this list is, you know, a lot of these ships are easy to fly and they're just fun to fly. A lot of them, as you can see, the bigger ones, we'll get into those. But again, the Nomad is a fantastic ship. Let me know what you think about these ships. Like, I just feel like the Nomad is really underrated and is a great ship to fly. All the tech in it, it's all the Xeon tech, it's awesome. I love it. Now, the Sabre, going on from that, like, yeah, that was one of the original fighters that a lot of very, like, a lot of people used because before they had the rework for the combat system, this was a great ship. And it might still be a great ship, but I feel like this was really at some points underrated because I had a lot of friends that used it but then a lot of people had a view on it that it wasn't very good and they didn't like it and you know there was just a whole bunch of stuff behind it but again another fantastic ship the Valkyrie I know that this is a troop carrier and it's to do ground ops but I love flying this thing around it's so fun to get in even when you see the Liberator edition I got the best in show edition it's so fun to fly it fun to look at fun to listen to and it's just even putting a ground vehicle, you can put so many ground vehicles in this. Like, you can put a couple of rocks in there, you can put a couple of small vehicles in there. It's amazing what you can fit in this thing and how much you can sort of squeeze them into the back of it. It might not go right for you, you might blow up, but again, go try it out, check it out. It's actually kind of fun to do this. <laughs> I do this a lot, and I've done it with the MSR as well. But my whole point with the MSR, some people are going to see this as overrated, and I completely agree with you, but I just love the look of it. I love flying it, I love the feel of it. I just love being in this ship. It just has a nostalgic feel to it. It has a really clean, crisp, elegant feel, which is something that I really like. It's like an, a crisp, elegant sort of looking interior and just really being able to enjoy the aesthetics. If I feel good in a ship, I'm gonna fly it. Now, sometimes I don't really feel safe in this ship. I do like the ship though. I do love flying it around, but I just sometimes I don't feel safe in it for obvious reasons that it, you know, it doesn't have the defenses and the attack capabilities that a lot of these other ships will have. Moving on from that, 600i is my daily flyer a lot of the time. It's my combat ship. If you have used the Andromeda in the past, that's another one I should have added, is the Andromeda. That is really underrated. Um, the 600i. A lot of people are going to say this is overrated. It shouldn't have the power that it has, but it has the power that it has. And if you change it, I will kill you. I don't care. This thing is fantastic. I love using it as a combat ship. I use, love using it as a daily flyer, going to missions, and just flexing in general. Like, I just love this ship. When a new player sees this, they're like, whoa, what is that? What? Why does it... The back end. I love the way the back end is so wide. It's such a good ship. And it's got a rework coming up. And you can put three size fives on, which is even better. But again, you need to learn how to fly these ships in combat and how to be effective with them. So they're not for everyone, but you can use them for other like other categories. Obviously, this thing isn't designed to be a fighter, but you can use it. Now, moving on from that, the Caterpillar. A lot of people aren't going to use this. And a lot of people are going to say, you know, it, it flies like a boat. Look at the size of it. Look at the way it's designed. Yes, it's going to fly like that. And the cab as well here... The cockpit is it detaches once that all comes in that can detach and become its own little com like command module and whatever and fly around and then you can come back and attach back onto it that's fantastic i think this ship is great and again modular it's going to be modular it's fantastic holds a lot of cargo not as a lot as the c2 or some of the other ships like that but again a fun ship to fly fun experience and if you haven't flown it definitely go check it out if you haven't flown any of these ships go fly them if you have let me know down in the comments what you think of them i think they're all fantastic if you like this leave a like comment subscribe if you didn't leave a dislike and we'll see you in the verse bye bye